Hello, my name is Stephanie and today I'd like to share with you a month of daily insect paintings and studies with watercolor. I would like to share my experience and thoughts so far in the hope they might be useful to yourself. Um, it is currently raining here, so if you hear some raindrops in the background, I apologize. Like most people out there, and this might come off as a shocker, I don't have a fancy soundproof studio. So back to the daily painting challenge. So I started the challenge on the 1st of January to kickstart 2018 and also to work on insects more. Because I really love insects, I find their shapes and colors and patterns fascinating and very inspiring. And you know, daily art challenges are a good way to practice art daily, so that's an added bonus since I wasn't doing daily painting so far. And one other benefit that I, I hoped that might help was to kickstart your own or my own creativity on a daily basis. Uh, because, well, inspiration comes from work and not unicorns. And if you do it right, if you put some intentions and use reference pictures and learn how to get the best result for, you know, a particular outcome, um, then daily challenges, they also greatly improve your skills. But now we need to get real. <laughs> so far, what was the most difficult for me was to find time for that challenge. Because in the end, I would end up painting someone between 10 and 12 p.m. in the evening. So last thing of the day, kind of rushed, like, oh my god, you don't have done your daily painting so far, you need to do it. And my boyfriend would look at me and scold me because it's like uh, I work already too much. <laughs> and he was kind of making fun of me because of that. And to be honest, it wasn't that enjoyable uh, to get back to work once you've had dinner and maybe watched a movie and then you realize, oh, I still need to do my insect painting and get back to work. So that was not really enjoyable. Also, quite shockingly, um, I need to rest <laughs> and I need a break from my working day. So working until just before I go to bed is just not a good thing to do. I mean, I don't mind painting per se, but when you have to paint, it's quite different than just fooling around with paint or, you know, doing something different to unwind, like uh, reading a book, uh, watching another movie or, or just talking to friends or to your cats. <laughs> So, of course, the original plan was much more disciplined and so perfect, uh, like most plans are. So the idea was to paint in the morning as a little morning practice, but pretty much like when I tried to do yoga in the morning, that attempt um, failed quite miserably, uh, because uh, well, um, like yoga, I prefer working on this at the end of the day, it would seem. I mean, I love working and sculpting, so I have no difficulties to jump into my usual artwork uh, first thing in the morning. Or, you know, to jump into video making or teaching or whatever else needs to be done, like art calls, art competitions, working on my websites, blogging, etc. So any kind of work-related thing, I have, I have no difficulties to make them in the morning because I do enjoy working a lot. In fact, dare I say, I prefer jumping right into the real stuff and leave the painting for when I, whenever I have time during the day. Uh, which, in a way, is a little counterproductive if you see painting as a creativity kickstarter. But I, I mean, I guess I just never see nor experience it that way, which I need to accept. And, well, I probably need to adapt accordingly. So no clue how yet, to be honest. I'm, I'm not really sure how, if I, I'm going to manage to have like a precise schedule for my daily painting. Uh, 
um, I need to find a way because I really don't want to be painting um, every evening so late on it. So I need to find a solution. But as I said, painting still kind of feels more like holidays to me and as such isn't a priority. Uh, so maybe it's just me who needs to see it as something really important. And maybe if I can get into the habit of making it, I don't know, maybe just after lunch. That that might be a good good idea. Just after lunch you're always kind of lazy because you just have something to eat, so maybe that's a good um, moment to paint for me. I will have to try that out. On the bright side, I feel obliged to do it because it's a challenge. And well, I'm and well, I belong to those people who, when they decide on certain rules in their life, then they follow them. <laughs> um, which sounds really odd um, to most people, but when I decide on rules, be it art art rules or lifestyle rules, um, it's because I thought really long about them, and so when I decide on them, they make sense, and so I enjoy following them because. If I don't, I feel like everything else might just start crumbling down. Which makes me think I ought to see a therapist. But that is another topic, isn't it? Well, all this to say that currently I work on the daily painting every evening. And this is problematic. For, well, two reasons. For one, it is exhausting as I don't allow myself a real rest in the evening and I really need holidays. I haven't had ho proper holidays since August and I'm really feeling it. No um, Christmas that wasn't holidays for me. I pretty much cooked all the time for all the people that were around, so no, no holidays for me. And I'm, I'm generally tired, so um, yeah, I, I think I need to address that issue. And of course, the second reason is that it's less beneficial as I force myself to paint. And although I enjoy the process of painting, the forcing yourself into it is just not much fun. So the, f so the whole challenge is on the fence on being annoying at times. And that really needs to change because at the core, I really love painting insects. I just haven't figured out how to make it... Um, how to do the best out of it. On the bright side, I really enjoyed painting and drawing insects. And I see real progress in my painting skills. I'm starting to have a better grasp of insects. I'm starting to be able to draw insects from memory. And yeah, that's, that's really good. That is something I wanted. So I'm really happy ab about that. And since I still feel I need to learn so much more about insects, because there are so many different insects out there, and to be honest, so far I, I focus mostly on how they look and how they move, but I don't really know a lot um, about the biological side, so to speak, the scientific side, how they live, etc. I did start a book, Planets of the Bugs. I haven't really had the time to read it much. But so these are things I really want to work on a little bit more because I'm, I'm just really interested in insects and bugs. And so uh, I really want to uh, continue the challenge. That, that is uh, something I like. I Basically, I would like to uh, form a daily painting practice for life. So right now it's going to be insects, but I hope to... Um, yeah, make it evolve into something else while I'll grow. And uh, the other things I'm going to change and have already changed for February is to paint a composition of insects on the same piece of paper. So I went with black and red um, quite by chance as I decided to start on a black and red butterfly the Diatria climina, Anas 88 butterfly. And I don't really want to say too much about it, as you'll slowly see the work in progress and the composition unfold. 
And I think that's really fun to see art um, becoming a reality. Um, that makes sense. So I, I feel like this this is quite an interesting approach for me uh, to share how you know how you start from nothing and then how the painting unfolds. I also need to. Um, I really need to record a little bit more about that latest composition, so I hope to make a short video after it when it's done. And then what I didn't expect it from the daily painting of insects is that they inspired my artwork in, in ways I hadn't imagined. So um, the colors and patterns especially are things I replicate now but in different shapes in my growing sculptures. So it's probably not obvious for most of you if you know my sculptural artwork a little bit. But I really take inspiration from the insects. I look at the colors and the color schemes etc. And then I'm thinking okay I'm going to work on that in my growing sculptures. So that is something that I really enjoyed because it kind of simplifies my working habits. As I said, I really enjoyed painting insects and it is also because they are so much easier to paint than to sculpt. So it is something that is really nice for me. Sculpting an insect is quite complex because the shape is complex, there are many parts, um, they have legs that are impossibly thin and their exoskeleton takes on shapes that are hard to grasp, especially when you work from um, top pictures that you can find on the internet. And most pictures of insects are of dead insects, so sometimes you're not quite sure how they move, how the legs work, how they stand, etc. So all these things can be quite challenging when you work on a sculpture, because these are things that are really important. But for a painting, it's not so much of an issue. Also, painting insects made me realize how important art studies are in my own work and sculptural work, especially when I do more complex things. So when I made the dancing mantises, um, it ended up to be really useful to make a lot of studies of the mantises up front, so I could better grasp how they looked, how they face um, was from all sides, how the body moves and works, um, where the legs exactly are attached, etc. Because once I understood how a mantis was physically or biologically working, I could draw from memory. And when you can draw from memory, you can easily invent poses for the insects that fit your um, story or sculptures. So this is something that I, I don't know, um, it's something that I really never really did before. I always did very quick sketches, but I rarely had an intense work on studies and how things work before actually sculpting. Probably also because most of my work is focused on growing biodiversity and nature, mushrooms and plants. And so the movement of these is a lot easier than insects or animals. So yeah, that's pretty much it for today. Um, thank you so much for watching and listening. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and maybe subscribe. Consider becoming a patron over at Patreon and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye!